Michigan State's got a really talented defensive tackle, Malik McDowell, 6'6", 276 pounds. In my initial top 50 list, he had a home. Unfortunately for Malik, this draft is so deep, he, he, he no he longer has the, a home in the top 50. I mean, he's talking about one of the top defensive tackles in the country. He doesn't make the list? Did not make the list. I think that says more about this class than what it says about him, although I wish he was a little more productive with only one and a half sacks. I mean, I'm just surprised that he didn't make the list. I'm Bucky Brooks. This is Daniel Jeremiah. We're going to talk about his top 50, the second version of his top 50 list. Let's just get right to it. Let's get bring the board up so we can talk about who's on this list. Oh, you see right there, we're working, we're working backwards here, Bucky. We got Chad Hansen, who is a vertical uh, speed threat for Cal as a wide receiver. You kind of climb up that list there. You see uh, Fabian Moreau, Ooh. Terrell Basham, both those guys, new additions to the list. Uh, Gerald Everett, the guy maybe dropped just a little bit because the guy ahead of him, Evan Ingram, had a phenomenal week down there at Mobile. My biggest problem, though, with Everett, who I'm a big fan of and why he slid a little bit, Buck, nine spots down to 44. He played in the fall 244 pounds. He showed up at the Senior Bowl 227 pounds. So I don't know what he was thinking there. I thought he played plenty fast on tape. I didn't think he needed to cut weight in order to run fast in Indianapolis. I like to see him put that weight back on and be healthy at the combine. You know, I liked him a lot. I like him and Evan Ingram. I think both of these guys had the ability to be kind of like Jordan Reed type playmakers, guys that can create mismatches in space. I do agree with you. When he showed up at 220 plus pounds, it's not necessarily what you want from a tight end. Now, I just see him put that weight back on. You can carry it. You carried it well in the fall. Let's, let's put it back on. You know, one of the guys that showed up at the Senior Bowl was Hassan Reddick, and he was a standout. Where does he fall on your list? Yeah, he jumps in. I hadn't had a chance to study him before we got down to Mobile and then did some tape on him in the evenings. He was phenomenal. Then went back and watched the practice tape for the week. You see him in coverage right there. He was outstanding. For somebody that played on the edge of the perimeter of the defense, either hand down or standing up as an outside linebacker, the way he covered and the way he was able to sort through the trash as an inside linebacker this week in Mobile really upped his value. You watch him, he can run like crazy. He's instinctive, he's tough. He's kind of a self-made guy. So I'm a big fan of Hassan Reddick. I think he's the number three inside linebacker in this draft I class. think he does move up. You look at his transition coming from high school where he was a walk-on safety at Temple to move and be a defensive in edge rusher to then play linebacker. Certainly a lot of entry. Let's go to the next part of the board, see who makes 31 through 40. Yeah, you see Cam Robinson. I'm maybe not as high on him as some others. Curtis Samuel, who is somebody you can use in the backfield. You can use him in the slot. Ultra, ultra explosive. We got a, some great edge rushers. Charles Harris, TJ Watt, you'll recognize the last name, is one of my favorite players in this group. And at the very top, 31 and 32, you see Trubisky and Watson, those quarterbacks kind of on the verge, late one, early two, just in terms of my evaluation. Yeah, there'd be a lot of discussion about those quarterbacks. Let's flip and move into the top 20 and see who else is in the next 20 yeah. and 30. Yeah, look, all you have to do is watch the way the Patriots threw the ball to their backs. Shoot, look at the way the Atlanta Falcons used their backs out of the backfield in that game. Somebody like Christian McCaffrey, I think that helps his value with what he can give you. Alvin Kamara from Tennessee, another Love running him. back. We both have been big fans of Bucky. Never had more than 18 carries in his college career, but he is dynamic and he's a complete back. And you scroll down there, I talked a little bit earlier about Reddick being the number three inside linebacker. Uh, Jared Davis there would be number two. You know, big physical player guy who's versatile. Here we go. Now we finally in the top 20. Tell me what stands out. Yeah, you look at a couple guys here at the top. You look at 12 and 13. You've got a couple tight ends there in the Joku and O.J. Howard, they're kind of jostling to be that first tight end off the board. You see Deshaun Kaiser, my number one quarterback, comes in at number 18 and just a slew of corners. Man, this is a great group of cornerbacks in this draft. It's a great group of corners, but it's also a great group of tight ends. O.J. Howard, why was he in your top 15? Yeah, look, he, he moved up a handful of spots from where I had him previously. I think he's one of the safest players in the draft. He's a complete tight end. He did a nice job in the run game this year. I wish he had more opportunities in the passing game. You're talking about somebody that's six foot six. He's right around 250 pounds. He can stretch the seam. He's got good hands, a big catch radius, and he's he's pretty explosive. Now, I wish he was a little bit more refined as a route runner, but a very gifted player. I was really impressed with what I saw from him at the Senior Bowl. His ability to run routes, catch the ball over the middle of the field. I thought he was a little better as a blocker than we anticipated. His ability to kind of be a traditional wide tight end certainly would bring him a lot of value in meeting rooms around the league. Yeah, to me, he's just safe. I mean, you talk about the ceiling for a prospect. You also talk about the floor. I think he's got a very high floor. I think you know exactly what you're getting. Yeah, let's move into the top 10 and see if there are surprises in the top 10. Yeah, not a lot of movement here in the top 10 from the uh, the first iteration of this list. You see the top there stays the same with Garrett 
Uh, Hooker was an unbelievable safety prospect. Jamal Adams, another safety there at number four. Marshawn Lattimore, I think, is one of the more gifted corners we've seen come out in a long time. And then you've got some some wide receivers oh, there at eight oh, and nine. Oh, Who do you want to oh, go? Where do you want to go? Oh, do you have Corey Davis over Mike Williams? DJ, you're going to have to explain yourself. Yeah, no, I watch the tape, Bucky. It's, uh, it's what I do. The, uh, the thing about Corey Davis that I love so much, he is an outstanding route runner. He's ultra competitive. You can use him inside, you can use him outside. He can go up and win those 50-50 balls. He's very, very polished. Now, he's going to have a couple drops here and there. You do when you have that sheer volume of targets. But, Bucky, I think he's ready-made to come in and make an immediate impact. Not to say I don't love Mike Williams. I got him right behind him. I think he's going to be that power forward at the next level. Corey Davis, though, a little bit more refined and polished as a route runner. Kind of reminds me of my colleague Reggie Wayne in terms of his route running ability, his ability to make things happen all over the field. It's surprising that you went with a small school standout over a guy that is a big body playmaker like Mike Williams, but I have enough time still left in the process to maybe talk you out of that. No, no, I'm going to get you on my team. You'll join me. Okay, well, for more of our conversation about draft prospects and all things related to mock drafts lists, make sure you click on NFL.com. We got you covered.